Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for iOS Today is provided by CashFly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. Control all the things in your home with your HomePod, your Apple Watch, your iPad, your iPhone, whatever. Plus, Breakout 2 Electric Boogaloo. And a new free app to animate all your photos of Leo. Oh, it's time for iOS Today. iOS Today is brought to you by Slide Belts. High quality, comfortable ratchet belts that are easy to adjust. If you want a better belt, go to slidebelts.com slash twit and use the code twit for 20% off. That was better. Much. Ho, ho, ho. Hey, hey, hey. It's time for iOS today. Leo Laporte on this side. Megan Maroney and all of her stuff on, on this that side. side. <laughs> I was supposed to bring some stuff in, but then I realized, hey, whoa, I don't use HomeKit. I know, you don't. No, I have uh, Hue lights, but I use them with the Amazon Echo and the Google Home. I have... Uh, you know, I have some automation. I have that uh, Fire Cube, the Fire TV Cube, but I use that with Amazon's Echo. HomeKit has been kind of a laggard, uh, which is weird because Apple was really on top of the home automation thing, they said anyway, early on. But they're catching up. I think, I, you know, you're probably going to have take offense to this. But I already do. <laughs> I think they're moving slowly because they're more secure and I do take offense to that, but okay. <laughs> uh, everything that is HomeKit compatible has to pass Apple's security yeah. and performance standards, and they are high, and I am happy that they are high Yes, standards. they should be high. Uh, the other reason is it, Apple has made it so darn hard to do HomeKit that everybody who has automated stuff says, yeah, we're going to wait and see how widespread HomeKit gets before we spend the time and energy to create HomeKit compatible mm -hmm. stuff. So everybody's jumping on the Echo bandwagon because there's so many Echoes out there and it's relatively easy to do an Echo-enabled uh, skill. I don't know. I mean, you're right. Security is a big deal, but there's security at both ends. So HomeKit is, the idea of HomeKit is eliminating the hubs so that you can use one device. May, sometimes, in the case of Hue, you still have to use a hub dedicated hub but you use one device to control everything and more importantly you can use scripting to create a, a bunch of actions with a bunch of different devices mm -hmm. so you can say you know it's boom boom time the lights go down the doors lock the bed rotates the curtains close <laughs> and the uh in the and the romantic music comes on right and you, and that then you get on your iPad and play and, a video and game. play some video. So, that, so the whole idea is that we could automate all these different uh, things at once. The issue is, uh, I think for uh, a lot of companies, um, that that's that's nice if if a lot of people are using it. But but since since oh I'm sorry I was talking about security. Let me go back. That's great and that should be secure. But there's still the issue of anything you put on the internet has to be secure. So really, the, the biggest security issue is not so much what hub is controlling it or if somebody's going to maliciously use Siri to get you to do something, but the fact that all of these devices have to independently be on the internet, and if they're not secure, they become a gateway into your network to somebody uh, from the outside world. And that's that's not something HomeKit fixes. That's a, Just HomeKit fixes the the control issue from a central hub. But there are certain things that HomeKit requires, like automatic over-the-air firmware updates. Oh, that's and nice. So you can't like be in the HomeKit alliance yes. unless you are right. compli compliant. That's good. So, they're, but they've they've also lessened their um, walls that you have to jump over right. a little bit. Um, so you used to actually have a certain chip inside right. your device. That was the biggest problem. Yeah. They changed that. And so now what I'm going to show you, like the Wemo plugs, you can have older Wemo plugs. Right. And they now have HomeKit, even right. though they were built without HomeKit. Apple so. was a little prescriptive, and they've loosened a little yeah. bit. And I think that's going to help a lot. It's, nevertheless, this is still, a, a, you know, it's so funny. We've been talking about home automation for more than a decade. And it's still a really challenging arena. It takes way too much effort on the part of the end user mm -hmm. to configure and set up. Well, <laughs> 
Look at Megan, for instance. I know. I How little... long did it take you to configure this home? Um, Like 45 years, I think. <laughs> well, no. Your whole life. No, it took a lot of time and a lot of this stuff. A lot of fussing, too. Yeah. And, you know, I'm working on the, the know-how 12 weeks of IoT, and that's kind of what pushed me to do it. Right. Otherwise, you get to a certain point, and you throw your hands up in the air and say, this is not worth it. Yeah, I, in my last place, I had... Uh, Nest thermostat. I had Hue lights. I had a lot of uh, home automation that I eventually just, when we moved, didn't put back in because it was like, eh, what did I get from it? Not right. just a headache. And I also, I have um, developed one firm rule and that is the problem that your IoT solves must be bigger yes. than the problems that it creates. That, causes, that seems fair. <laughs> so, All of that having been said, we've made huge progress. It's we gotten have. much easier. And I think we're very close to that dream of automating the home. Right, exactly. And more so, and more people seem to be doing it. Okay, so my um, the, my favorite home kit device is device is my Schlage lock on my front door. Front door lock, yeah. and so well, that has to be secure. Um, I I'm locking the door the door right now. Um, at home. That's really cool because you noticed you left it unlocked. <laughs> I did, uh, and now it's locked, and I'm sure my kids who are home are just like, well, well the door just does locked. It, out of curiosity, does it make a big chunk? It does, yeah. <laughs> and the dog probably barks. <laughs> and, <laughs> That's fun. I would turn it on and off yeah, all the time. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, but not only that, it's that my kids don't need keys because there's a keypad on the front and we have a special or code. Or they could call mom and say open Unlo the door. <laughs> the, yeah. yeah, if they forget the code. Yeah. Uh, other people, we can let them in if we want to let someone in only one time. We can give them a one time. A one time code. Yes, That's pretty one cool. time code. We yeah. can, you know, if there was someone who was our friend and they had our code, a special code, and then they weren't our friend anymore, we could change their code. <laughs> Does a Schlage lock support Bluetooth? In other words, does it notice that you're coming up the thing and open the door? Because um, that worries me a little bit. You can set an automation to do. But so you don't like have to. No, have you don't that. have yeah, to. I would no. turn that off. No. Um, and even then, even if you set an automation to unlock your door, it will give you your Apple Watch or your iPhone will say, are you sure you want to unlock the door? Ah, good. And then, That's so, good. you know, okay. if I'm being held at gunpoint and someone... Um, is you know I you just don't want somebody to hack Bluetooth and be able to walk into your house. Now, of course, we must observe that locks are only a suggestion. Right. Anybody who really wants to get in can break a window, mm -hmm. can smash the lock. And I kick think the door it's a more in. more of a request. Please don't come yeah. in yeah. to my house. Yeah. Not <laughs> yeah. So it, a lock in and of itself isn't isn't full security right. anyway. So uh, I'm not too worried about that. If somebody really wants to get in, they're not going to mm -hmm. try to hack your snarf your Bluetooth. That's the hardest way to do it. Exactly. Um, okay, so here's the Twit room that I've created in uh, my home um, home kit app. Is that where you start for all of this? Is you use the home? Yes, app? the home kit app. It comes installed on all of your devices, and you know it's just the home. Um, this little guy right there looks like a little home. Um, and I've created a room for all of these devices. If you see the wide shot, you can see all these devices that um, I have here that I have created that I can um, control through my iPad. So Princess Leia, for example, Padre made <laughs> oh, me this bobblehead little, Leia. <laughs> little stand and I can turn her off by doing that. And then she turned off. Lay off, and, she says. Um, so I can say, hey Siri, turn on Princess Leia. Now, by the way, we should point out something happened there that you might have thought, what, what happened? Both the HomePod and your iPad, and probably your phone and watch, heard mm -hmm. that. <laughs> and it, it looks like the, the the right thing happened, which is one of the devices said, I'll get it, and yeah. everybody else said, okay, fine. Exactly. So let me move this, and I'll show you what Princess Leia is connected to here. Oh, she got knocked over. <laughs> Princess Leia is connected to... That's a Wemo plug there. The, no, this is a Wemo, but that's connected to something else. Oh. This is the Eve. Eve. Eve um, from by Elgato. Elgato. They have a whole line of tiny um, plugs and sensors, and I, I'm going to show you the Eve motion sensor. In Apple a bit. timers will recognize the name Elgato. They had a camera and television uh, receiving business, which actually they've sold off. So they've focused their entire attention now on home automation. But they're I really like Elgato. They were always a good hardware company and they were very mac centric yeah. apple centric and so they're, yeah they, they don't have any they only work with yeah HomeKit so they're a home else. kit company that might be a good indicator one of the questions i have does the apple home app auto discover all this stuff in other words can you say search my network for devices that i can control or do you have to go in and say i have an eve plug i want to control that 
You do. And then you also have to, like, shoot your camera at the little home kit oh, okay. sticker thing, you know, that okay. has the number on it. That's and, a you know, QR code. On QR there. code. Yeah. Yeah. And, no, it... Uh, I'm, I bet like in a couple of years it'll be able to do that because my Echo Plus, which is a hub, all I have to say is find my smart devices yeah. and it finds them. Yeah. So that's a, <laughs> to me, that's a huge advantage. You could just say find everything and now let's figure out what we can do right. with it. Yeah. Exactly. I'm, I'm betting that at some point it will do that. But this, you really, yeah, you have to um, shoot it at the, the number. And that's someone, probably considered a security, another security. Yes. Feature. And, and some, the lights usually don't, um, they don't, they don't almost have the numbers on there. They come with these tiny little booklets. And then oh, you get, lose if you, the booklet, you're yeah. at it a lot. Or confuse one light bulb's booklet with another oh, light bulb's booklet. Yeah. So I'll give you a tip for that that uh, a viewer gave to me, which is you keep Store all them. of those in a yeah in a secure note That's on a very your good idea. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, on your iPhone so that I have all of those and you know I can find them because I mean I guess some I don't know what someone could do with that number um, and that barcode, but. I mean, well, they could uh, they could sit outside your house and and spook you by turning the lights on and off. Yeah. Um. <laughs> really, again, the, I'm not so worried about security and control. I'm, which I guess for a lock is important, but for lights, no. I'm much more worried about the fact that if these devices aren't up, you know, kept secure, somebody could use them to get into your network mm -hmm. and do, and really do some damage. So, uh, but uh, that's a good that's a good thing that Apple is now. Uh, uh, you know, being saying you have to have firmware updates and things like that, setting standards for these devices. Yeah. That's good. And if you do you've, use all Eve products, all Elgato products, they have their own little app, which is a little bit prettier than, um, or, you know, than the uh, home app. They have different options down here, different scenes and types. Um, but I could also unlock and lock my front door, even though that's not an Eve product. Um, the Schlag is not an Elgato product, but I can use that. But I, I like to use HomeKit. Okay. So th this is the other thing that's causing a lot of confusion is that there are, you know, multiple hubs mm -hmm. and you still have to have a hub and the hub can do it and the HomeKit can do it. And it's confusing. I, you, of course, you want to use HomeKit because you want to have the ability to go cross right. hub and mm -hmm. automate. Yeah. But then I can also like turn down the lights, turn, you know, if they, if, Turn oh, that's different neat. colors and such like I that. I like that slider. Okay, but one is that thing, the Eve app or that's the HomeKit app? This is the HomeKit app. Okay. Um, so, but one thing about HomeKit is that it's not necessarily um, as self-explanatory as other parts of Apple. Like, if you wanted to get back to HomeKit on this screen, show this screen for yeah, a second. Yeah, how would you get back? What would you do? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Well, you, you press that. Powered on, okay. <laughs> but yeah. I mean, it's just like there's, it's you not. You learn that, you know. I guess. Yeah, yeah, you hard, pre you learn it, but it's not with so many Apple products. It's just like there's a back button. There, why isn't you know? Why doesn't it say yeah. go back? You know, yeah. I don't, I don't know what to do. But yeah, that's how you do that. <laughs> okay. Um. Okay. So uh, now um, I'll show you. You see this light? Can you see that light bulb? There's that a light bulb on a lamp, like a tall lamp. This okay. is not a smart light bulb. It's a smart lamp. It's a it's a regular lamp. A regular it's lamp dumb. and light bulb. It's the stupidest lamp. Stupid. How are you going to control school, a stupid it lamp? It got made fun of. <laughs> what are you going to do? Um, that one is plugged into the Wemo plug, which ah, we talked about before. The Wemo. The plug this is can... a Wemo mini plug. Okay. And just recently, so for, there's two steps to this. First, Wemo got HomeKit. Um, you know, for backward compatibility. So if you had a Wemo, but you needed to get a hub last year, they got that. Now, starting last month or July, you didn't even need a hub. You can just use this plug, which nice. that means you can put any of your non HomeKit devices into that plug. I can say that one is called, what did I call that one? Torch. <laughs> Again, the other side <laughs> of this problem. Yes. What did I call that lamp? <laughs> hey Siri. Meanwhile, your wife or husband goes over and just switches it on. Hey Siri, turn on my torch. I can't do that in home kit because I'm not sure what your wife and husband goes means. <laughs> okay. If I were Marco, I would take advantage of that by talking every time you do this. Okay, I'm <laughs> he sorry. does do that. He Zip. does do that. Yep. Yep. Hey Siri, turn on my torch, please. Got it. Oh, that was fast. Now here's the other problem I have. <laughs> And I have this with my Hue lights. If there's a switch, an on-off switch, which there is on that lamp, mm -hmm. inevitably somebody's not going to understand that, oh, no, 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 never turn the lamp off. We always use our voice to do that mm -hmm. and switch the lamp off. 
and then you have to go over like a like a savage mm -hmm. and turn the light on and then say turn on torch, which I is know. really annoying. Yeah, I mean, I, do I have to do that every almost every day. Somebody goes in my office and turns off my lights. It is difficult. It is a real struggle. I mean, my husband and I have been together since 1994. <laughs> We've been through thick and thin, but I think but this, this smart is, home stuff might break us. And, and you know who else does that? Stacey Higginbotham. It's, yeah, I know. She says, my long suffering husband. Yes, because yeah. we put cameras all over our house. Their, our husbands are walking around in their underwear. We're showing it on TV. It's, um, yeah, it's, it is. <laughs> Because uh, he will, ju I just like, don't, don't, don't turn that off. I can turn it off with my voice. Yes, right. It's like, come on. <laughs> what have we gained here? Everything. Yeah. <laughs> okay, now, so. Here's something very exciting. I just want to point out, Philips Hue, uh, on their website, I think today, maybe yesterday, put up this image. This is very exciting. <gasps> is Soon, you're going to have <gasps> a lit makeup mirror or whatever you call that kind of thing. A vanity. A vanity. <laughs> That's controlled by your voice. I need that right now. I think you should say, you should call it mirror, mirror on the wall. Yes, I would. I would call that. <laughs> and then light up the fairest of them all. So that's going to be part of the hue. And I was supposed to bring in, and I didn't, my ambient domes. But I this actually is the one thing I think is pretty useful. Uh, and I was talking with Scott Wilkinson about this. It is nice to have, when you're watching TV, some ambient light. But ideally, your ambient light is tuned to work with the screen. Scott suggested that you use, uh, there's a variety of ways to do this. If you have a DVD for tuning screen colors, or if you could just get a white screen, a fully white screen up and put it up there and then tune your, these ambient domes to that color. And then those domes are sitting behind my TV, not visible, but indirectly lighting up the wall. So I s use the slider on the hue to get the color just right. And that's why you want to use these hue multicolor lamps. And then those are the ambient lighting for when I'm watching TV. Now, the next step is for me to do what you've done, which is kind of coordinate that. And I think I can do that with a fire TV, maybe, so that when I turn on the TV, the hues go to the right tone and they turn on and all of that stuff. Okay. Right now, they just, I have a motion sensor and they turn on when I walk in the room. That's and funny. since no one else can figure out how to turn them off, they just flip the switch and then nothing happens when I come in the room the next time. <laughs> and my godlike existence is what, ruined. What motion sensor do you use? Uh, so Hue has a motion sensor oh, okay. that they offer. And that's actually great because you can put it somewhere uh, appropriate. So you don't want, for instance, people walking by the door uh, to have the lights come on. So I have it turned away from the door or you could put it on the other side of the door. There it is. And that way, when I do come in the room, like intentionally come into the room, the lights come on. Mm -hmm. And I frankly find that to be incredibly useful. That to me is home automation. That's right. what it should do. Yeah. So that's, I have the Eve sensor here. Same idea. Yeah. And then you can set it to do all kinds of things. This is the Eve motion and see it was triggered because it just saw my right. face in right. front of it. And then. Oh, it's, but no, it's just motion though, right? It's not face. No, no, not face, but it, yeah. yeah, it just saw a thing. Something happened moved. to me in my face. Something moved. So then, yeah, here's where I can, um, I guess it's, I'd have to do this in automations um, and. You'd have to there. do it in the Eve setup. Yeah, so motion yeah. detected. So have your access. So this is like if this, then that kind of, you know, okay. you if that okay. does that, then you can select accessories and scenes. So if you detect, you know, motion, then you can turn on John, um, which is the name of my light or turn on my torch right? or turn on Princess That's Leia. what I use it. And I use the Hue Hub and the Hue app to do that. Uh, but it also works automatically, as you mentioned, with Amazon's Echo, because it says, oh, you've got Hughes and, mm -hmm. and, the, and the Google Home also. I could just say, turn off the lights. I could say, the turn off the lights in the room. And now they're doing it so that they know which room. You can assign lights to rooms. So when you leave a room, for instance, it can, it can know, oh, t you just turn off the lights. Of, I could say, turn off lights, and the Google uh, ho uh, Home or the Amazon Echo will say, oh, the one in the den heard that. So I'm when you say turn off lights, you mean in the den. You don't mean in the living room. Mm -hmm. That kind of, to me, that's the where we need to go, where the automation gets a little bit smarter. And, and uh, I guess you could do that by hand if mm -hmm. you were, you know, very clever. I think that is one, by the way, solution to this is to support if this, then that. Mm -hmm. And let people, or as soon to be a series of yeah, suggestions. I think so. Um, so I, I've shown you two smart plugs. And then these, I know you use Hughes. I uh, have a couple of LifeX bulbs because you gave me some of your old Hughes and they required hubs and they were complicated. And I, I'll take them back if you don't want okay, them. Okay, I'll give them back to you. Um, this one is called John. So I can say, hey, Siri, 
turn off John. It turns off, or I could say that's hey. funny because in that case, it was the iPad that took that. Oh, uh, it did command. not the yeah, not the yeah. home pad. Oh, yeah. oh, interesting. Or hey Siri, turn John red. Mm -hmm. And that one, the home pod took. Yeah, that's so it's where your voice is aimed or heard. Yeah, that. it doesn't matter. It'll do. That's oh, what I yeah. like because it's like if we uh, echo. You, it's you like, pointed that out because I only have one home pod. You only have one home pod too. Yeah. I mean, nobody has. I mean, how many people have HomePods everywhere? They're too expensive. But I have one HomePod in the kitchen. But the fact that I could have my watch or my phone mm -hmm. or my iPad respond to that, and I usually have one or two more of mm -hmm. those with me. So, I really just want the eyelashes, the IoT eyelashes, so I can just blink and things will happen. <laughs> like, like bewitched. Yeah, that's that will be true. <laughs> true that's automation. That's I dream of genie. <laughs> that's um, really where all this comes from. We all wished we were Elizabeth Montgomery and bewitched. I know. I get a lot of joy when things respond <laughs> to my voice. <laughs> hey, Siri, turn off John. Yeah, worked. Mm -hmm. Even though I was talking, which is a good thing. Yeah. Uh, does the TV being on or other stuff being on, or people, obviously people talking can confuse it. Mm -hmm. So that's one other problem I have with voice control is it needs to be a quiet, quiet. environment. Yeah. yeah, you really need to. That's that's why, like, if, you know, if my marriage ends over home automation, it'll be fine. You won't just mind. Just be quiet. Yeah, it'd be a lot easier. And, yeah, just be you all alone. Get me and my devices. And Gilbert. And Gilbert, yes. Um, bar dog barking does not usually affect. Not really. But I think if you could Wouldn't control, that be cool? Yeah. Like if he could bark and, and I don't know, let a stranger in? That'd yeah. be so cool. <laughs> it would be cool. Okay, I've got one more device. Um, the the Nano Leaf light panels, which I showed off on the screensavers in May. Those are those. These are crazy. Um, you know, they come apart and they're decorative. More yeah, than they're really they're decorative and fancy, but they're not new. But what is new is the Nano Leaf remote. So uh, this is for people. It's a dodecahedron. Is that really what it is? Well, I don't know. Count the <laughs> count the faces and um, tell there's me. There's twelve. Uh, then it's a, is that a dodecahedron? No, that's a icosahedron. That's a, I don't know what it is. 12 faces. Quickly, chat room. <laughs> it's, this is, it's a, whatever it is, it's designed for people who don't want to use their voice. By the way, I just want to, I'm, okay. I'm being corrected by the it's, chat room. It is the. Bewitched was the nose. Oh. It was I Dream of Genie that was the blink. And it did require. That. The arm fold. So it was a dodecagon. <laughs> Dodec do Should we? Do we have any other corrections see, we need to make? It's not before? a hedron. It's a. It's a gon. A do dodecagon. Okay. Okay. I was close. No, 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 no. That's two dimensional. Yeah, it's a dodecahedron. I was right. Boy, that's a weird thing that I got that right off the top of my head. That is. I'm. I magically knew how many sides there was. There You're were. very smart. You're smarter than any of these. My God, she's here. holding a dodecahedron. <laughs> so this dodecahedron. <laughs> Is for people who don't want to control with their devices or with their voices, but with this dodecahedron. Do you roll it like Dungeons and Dragons? <laughs> you, what do you do with it? Okay, so I've called this Control Freak. I named it that. And then let's go into the Control Freak and go into the settings and see all these buttons. You can control them yourself. So, oh, Princess Leia, come on. <laughs> She's um, just not cooperating. So let's set her there. She has no, uh, okay, we'll no just, mouth. Did you notice that? Oh, yeah. How does she say, help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi? <laughs> you have to say it for okay. her. Okay, so I have Princess Leia as number four. And let's hope that this works. Where's the number four? And then I just press. I'm pressing all of them. Press. And it should give me some feedback. <laughs> Why is that? Why would you care? Because it should control the Princess Leia. But ideally. you have to touch the right face the right number so you have i've controlled okay so let's do the button one is disabled. so there's 12 so, different possibilities on this dodecahedron yes so we've controlled and, and you touch whatever so that means you, each face has a different thing it does right so we number you have one, to remember that <laughs> yes yes <laughs> seems, seems a little over complicated so i could do one i'm gonna add uh i could i think i could add my unlock my front door with it yeah so um, I'm going to unlock my front door with number one. Okay. So this unlock. underscores the fact that at least Elgato believes that the audience for this is not normal people, but people who are willing to memorize 12 different <laughs> functions. This is from Nanoleaf. That's oh, not Nano Leaf. Oh, Nano Leaf. Okay. Um, so hopefully I'm I guess anybody who would buy door. decorative 
light LED light panels for their home. Yeah. Because that's all this is, right? They're decorative. Yes, but you can control anything in your home with these. You can control that. You can control these lights. Right. You can set it to do... It's like the Do you have to buy sensor. the panels to get the dodecahedron? No. The remote, the Annaleaf remote comes separate. So you can control anything that was, you can control with HomeKit. And um, I, knew, I knew at least one of these demos wouldn't work. <laughs> yeah, we were counting on it. <laughs> um, is it because you're holding the ball? Maybe, maybe. If you just put it on the surface. Yeah, because I it's just... It's confused want, by okay. multiple... Interfaces. Can you see that? No. Oh, I did something. Yeah. What should <laughs> something. I touch? One? Touch. Uh, let's no, that'll see. unlock your door. <laughs> you could touch uh, number six. I think you have to hold it until you feel the feedback. I feel the force. Did you feel the force? No. Is that turning Is it, it off? off? Or oh, I felt something there. Okay. That's turning it on. We want now to I'm turn feeling it. it. Oh, you know what? You have to shake it to wake it. And then... Okay, shake then it to wake it. it. And now touching it. I think you have to turn it on. Let's see. All right, turn on. Okay, now do number seven. Try number seven. Number seven. Yeah, but yeah, I don't know if you... Does it yeah. have to be up? Oh, yeah, I think so. <gasps> you did it. Oh, my God. And now try number six, turns it off. Oh, my God. <laughs> Hold it. Oh, this is this is not a, a Sterling demo. I could have told you this is a bad idea. Okay, good it thing does we're, glow multiple colors. We're also going to do this on the screensaver, so um, on Saturday, so All right, we'll have can't this wait. down. Uh, can I get this down? Let's get it down before we do the screensavers. So seven turns it off. Where's seven? Now I, the other thing is you have to find the face, turn it on, and then six turns. Ah, oh, yeah, you did, did it, it now. Now seven. Turns it on. Okay. And six. Six turns it off. Okay. Okay, let me just memorize that by doing it a few thousand times. Okay, we got it. And actually, so, if, yeah. Can't you imagine, like, you're giving this, uh, your mom comes to your house, and you're going to go to work, and you're like, Mom, if you want to turn the TV on, it's number seven. one. Turn it off, it's number two. <laughs> That's why voice is so great. Yeah. It, although it's not great either because of all the things we've talked about. This is kind of interesting. So you leave this uh, on your coffee table? I guess so, yeah. And it and has you... AA batteries and um, so it, you know, lasts a while. You can also set the settings to change the color on the nano leaf lights. So <laughs> make different scenes for that so that you don't actually really need to know what they are. You're just like, look, you press this and it turns this. And It seems to turn on automatically. You mean the light or the... Oh, you just tap it. You don't have to hold until it... <laughs> no, I just didn't do anything. <laughs> I could turn it off and then watch when I turn it to the right side. <laughs> All right. <sighs> I think um, I have exhausted my uh, home kit. Maybe it's just turning it to the top, does it? Maybe. Oh, maybe. You know what? Is that what it is? You don't even need to... Yeah. Yeah. That's the idea. Oh. There's no pushing involved. What? You just move it to the to the face up that you want. Oh, look at that. If I hit... <laughs> How do you... And oh, yeah. Look, I, there's the directions. I'm a smart monkey. <laughs> I figured it out. Smart monkey. Smart. This is made for smart monkeys. But why was I pressing it before and then You it don't worked. need to... Because you just happen... Well, it does say press... But see, just the idea, now I understand why it's a dodecahedron, okay. <laughs> is that you put the face up. This is for, really, this is for very nerdy people. But they, so are those weird lights. Yeah. Right? I like the lights. Um, so, forest. So you could have different colors and different numbers. And so you just keep this on your coffee table. I can't, oh, yeah. You know what? Princess Leia just it's, turned on. It's kind of a game. It's yeah. really more of a game than it is an actual product of value and use but it's an interesting game and it does vibrate when you put it to the right surface so watch i'll put it to six and now the light will go off yeah and what and which number is leia uh leia is four what what is she <laughs> well there's on on and off are separate which i think that's confusing well you have 12 leia is two and three two and three i don't know which is on and which is off she's at three now she's at two now She's at three now. There. Oh, there. Three is off. Two is on. The so other... let's make a rule. If it's divisible by two, uh, then that would be on. If it's modulo uh, one of two, then that would be off. 
Okay? Just remember that. Okay. The other confusing thing is that I set, remember, I set the Eve motion to do all these things too. So <laughs> um, maybe that's why they were cause <laughs> turning off and on. What if your I cat know. got a hold of it <laughs> and all the lights were going yeah. off and on and off and on and off and on? That would be amazing. Oh my God, take the dodecahedron away from the feline. Yeah. What? This um, is very Big Bang Theory. I, I am fond of it. Um, oh, nice. I'm glad you're happy. <laughs> I hope you two will stay very happy. Um, one more thing. Uh, this is a bit of new HomeKit news. There's HomeKit removed the doorbell category. And we were talking about yesterday. Yeah, I you thought were like, that was very ring. odd. And, and I was like, I don't think the, ri the ring is great, but I don't think it works with... Why? I don't know. Um, and the only thing I can guess this... is that they don't have their own. Can I just say this? This is the problem yeah. right here. Because you're... And, well, I think that... I oh, mean, Apple. I think Apple's it, decided that, oh, we don't have one, so we're going to take it out or something. Yeah. But you're you're at the mercy of Apple and their business decisions as to what you can control in your home. But I have no problem with the fact that I can um, use... I mean, I also have Amazon in my home. Like, I have the ring and I can control Thank it with my God. Echo show. And Thank God we have Google, Amazon, and Apple all in our home. And if one of them changes their mind about a particular business category, we can at least use the other one. Right. Well, or you could walk over to the switch and turn it on. Like an animal. Like an animal! <laughs> I don't have any Google <laughs> the, Assistant stuff, stuff in my house. Yeah, I know, because um, you don't want Google to hear what you're saying. No, just because I don't need it, because Amazon does everything I know. between I have, Amazon and HomeKit. I have everything. all three. In fact, I even have Cortana, which no one has, be just because I'm supposed to. That's my job is to try all this mm -hmm. stuff. But I, but it, uh, I, unless you're assigned, oh, Megan, you got to cover home automation. You, are you going to do this? Probably not. No. Like, and it's a lot of stuff. Like, it's just yeah. a lot of Who really things. needs another plastic dodecahedron, really, on their coffee table? I One's do. enough. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. That's my, um, that's my, oh. for my Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> <laughs> now, I really don't know if it's the Eve trigger motion or that. And <laughs> I think we'll have this all down pat by Saturday when I do the screensavers with you. And then when your dog eats it. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, I think it's time. I think it's kind of fun, though, because... As a husband, I could just sit here because yeah. you know how guys like to fiddle. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's gals too. I don't. But guys like to just fiddle with stuff, and I could just see sitting with this, yeah. fiddling with it all evening, and having things come on and off randomly. And <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. It's just so much fun. Well, you could set it to turn your HomePod on too. Like that's super spooky. You know, like yeah. Our HomePod randomly speaks and plays music all the time. Really, your yeah. HomePod? Yeah, and I think it's because the word S-I-R-I -I sounds so much like a million other words in the English language. Like that? <laughs> <laughs> I spelled it! What is the Siri spell now? Because that's going to be the end of the world. It's like when your toddler can start to spell. Then you have to say everything in French. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I think that's... I'm going to send this to my mom. Please do. And make her insane. <laughs> I'm going to say, Mom, Mom. You'll never have to get up and turn on and off anything again. Here's a, you, all you need is this dodecahedron <laughs> and, and a sheaf of instructions. Just remember that eight turns on the oven and nine turns on the humidifier. <laughs> and and uh, she's just going to hate me. Okay. I We have not <laughs> talked to Mary, your mom, in a while. And I think it's about time. I think we should send her that and the lights, um, and then have her give her review. <laughs> no, I don't. I can't. No, I can't. Remember, I have to talk to her all the time. I just can't. I I'll just talk can't. to her about it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, that's what I. That, that's actually a good thing. Is just palm off different things on somebody. So Meg, from now on, Meg is in charge, mom, of your home automation yes. wo worries. Mm -hmm. Just call her. Mm -hmm. Is it time to tighten our belts? Oh, man. Tighten your belts is right. Oh, I'm so excited about this. I've been wearing my slide belt all the time now because, you know, for a long time, uh, as a uh, man of certain of certain girth, uh, I had moved to suspenders because I couldn't get a belt that didn't either feel too tight or let my pants fall down. There was, there was no happy medium, right? Either I was going, uh, or my pants would fall off. Then I found slide belt. This has solved solve my life in fact i i even got a slide belt monogrammed with twit let me show you how the slide belt works just when you get it 
the nice thing about the slide belt when you order it is you, you it, it comes in a really a variety of sizes all the way up to 48. You just cut this, uh, and that's what I did. And then once you get the size you want, you add the buckle. And it's very easy to do that. I'll show you how you do that real quickly here. It just goes right in this special buckle grip. I don't. I won't close it because once you close it, it, you can't get it out. And I have because I decided to cut my belt a little bit, make it a little bit shorter. Um, but you lock it in there. Now the slide belt is so awesome. Let me show you the ratcheting end. This is a ratchet belt. And so the idea is there isn't just one hole every inch. You don't have to cut. This This will work for a, a much broader range of sizes. So you just slide the uh, belt in. And when you get, and when you, you know, and you're actually going to leave it like that. And then you ratchet it to the size you want. Such a satisfying size. It is. It's really satisfying. And then when you, <laughs> when you want to loosen it, you just lift this and it just comes right out. It is really, really awesome. And they have a huge range of belt materials. This is, of course, a very nice leather. They have high-quality leather, but they also have canvas belts. They have vegan belts, vegan leather belts, full-grain, top-grain leather. They're a huge variety. Ladies' uh, belts? Ladies, of course. They got men's, women's. They actually have a whole bunch of stuff. i got to show you this one more thing, which is the survival belt. <laughs> I love this. Man, this is this is what you need if you're in the outback. This is the survival belt. Looks just like a normal belt buckle, doesn't it? Well, it's not, my mm. friends. First of all, you got a knife <laughs> in the belt. Uh, maybe you have to open this to get this out. Yeah. So that's, by the way, that's a safety thing, right? Obviously, you don't want it to just slide out. So you have to open that, and then it'll come out. That's it. Very mm. sharp. And a bottle opener, right? This is also, let me close this so I don't hurt myself let me this is also they've got a tinder in here you can light fires and a flashlight so this thing <laughs> this thing can do anything you need it to do this you can actually make fire make fire with your belt buckle <laughs> this is the i think this would be such a great gift monogram for a groom's uh, men gift you know put the uh, date or the initials of the bride and groom or whatever uh if you've got a survivalist in the house you're just going to love this slide belt. You know, guys, uh, we don't think about our belts too often. If, in case, Unless they don't work, then you think about it all the time. <laughs> this is the belt you want. It, just when, just when you, you know, you've thought, oh, i got to give up on belts. Slide belt, the patented ratchet design, adjusts precisely 32 different pr adjustments. That makes it very comfortable. Also, you have a, you know, big meal, easy to loosen. Mm -hmm. Easily remove the buckle and mix and match with other straps. So, you know, you buy one buckle, but you buy a bunch of straps, and you can mix and match. You can have, you know, anything. That's why the, you know, I have the monogram buckle on everything because, you know, I, I, I just don't buy a bunch of straps. You can wear them casually around the house at the office. It's good for date night. It's a really great travel belt. Easy to take off for TSA and easy to put back on. If you're still not convinced, one-year warranty, free exchanges, no hassle returns. We kind of always ask that uh, anybody who's, uh, you know, that, I think that's kind of uh, table stakes for anybody who's going to advertise on Twitter. we got to make it easy for you to to try it. And that this is as easy as you can get. If you're ready for a better belt, go to slidebelts.com slash twit. Oh, and by the way, the other thing we love to do at Twit, we've arranged a really good discount for you. 20% off. That is huge. 20% off when you use the code twit on your order. Slidebelts.com slash twit. Slidebelts with an S dot com slash twit and twenty percent off when you use the offer code twit. This would this would be a great gift for the man or woman in your life. By the way, that was this is vegan and it looks oh, it's beautiful. Yeah, it it looks really nice. It looks like leather. It feels like leather, hand stitched, uh, but it's vegan. Make the cows happy. Make the cows one. happy. Slidebelts dot com slash twit. Make Josh happy. More important. Mm -hmm. He's our he's our editor, and and I think for yourself get the survival mm -hmm. belt and then when somebody says gosh if only we had a ferrocerium uh, fire starter rod mm -hmm. does anybody have a ferrocerium fire starter rod in the house you go oh yeah it's on my belt <laughs> led flashlight bottle opener and a very sharp it says os8 steel knife if you're a knife person you'll know what that means mm -hmm. a us8 Thank you, Slide Belts, for your support of our show, iOS Today. And thank you. I always have to, I always forget to say this, but thank you, the, our viewers, for supporting our sponsors and making it possible for us to do the show. 
and give it to you for free. That's important. We need to talk about the iPad rumors. <sighs> there was a CAD image from Pro Leaks that was shared with it, what they appeared get it to be is the that uh, where Pro Leaks got it. I don't know. Yeah. From the, where do leakers get anything? But it appeared to be that the smart connector was at the bottom so that we would. Yeah. Because face, of face, the face ID is at the top. And that you'd only be able to use face ID with it in portrait mode. Well, of course, that's something the CAD does. The CAD is the design, mm -hmm. you know, the, the software design. That's something the CAD won't tell you. Uh, but we know that Apple has been working on sideways face ID. And I'm almost certain that it, before Apple would put the uh, a face ID on uh, an iPad, which is often held in uh, landscape mode, uh, wherever they put it, it would make sense for them to put it, by the way, on the left side on landscape mode, because you've already got a camera there, right? Mm -hmm. And you're don't you you you're going to have to have some bezel there because that's how people will hold it. Mm -hmm. But before they would put that face ID sideways there, they have to perfect sideways face recognition. Mm -hmm. And I don't think actually that's that hard to do. So Really? Yeah. So it's my expectation that, yes, it, I think it makes perfect sense that that's where, if they're going to do face ID, and I bet you they will, on the next generation iPad, that that's exactly where they'll put it because the camera's already there. So you might as well put it there. Um, and because you need, you need, you can't get, you can't do a bezel-less tablet. Yeah. That's not a good idea. You need to hold it. Because you can't, I mean, the, be, you know, the bezel list is when you can hold it like that. I mean, you'd have to have yeah. enormous hands. Exactly. You'd have to have shack hands to hold it like that. <laughs> uh, so I think there will always be bezels at the left and right because people do use it in portrait mode. I think that's naturally where you'd put the face ID. So that I think logic tells you, you've got to have sideways face ID if mm -hmm. that's going to happen. So, yeah, that's I do believe that, though. I think that that, I don't know about the CAD design or where they got it, but I do believe that's what they'll do. Well, we'll see. September, you won't Probably, be maybe not. Mm -hmm. We don't know. Uh, iPads have been announced in October in the past, separately from iPhones. It's, oh, that's know, true, yeah. You can never really tell no. what Apple's going to do. Who knew that they would release new MacBook Pros in July? <laughs> I mean, you know, it's just whatever. What I like to do is say I'm convinced it's going to be September and it's going to be um, Face ID on the left-hand side. And then the next week, on next week's episode, I'll say the next thing. And then when they decide, then I can just show, well, I remember knew. on episode yeah. 422? I told you, as I told you, <laughs> you might laugh, but I think there are actually people who do that. Yeah. They predict everything and then mm -hmm. say, look, I got it. Mm -hmm. I got it right. I'm I'm really looking forward to new iPad Pros with a, more screen ratio. I think you do have with a tablet limited. Uh, you can't go to 100% screen ratio. Um, and I would really like the iPad to look like the iPhone 10 in, in sense of Face ID and the and the swiping and all mm -hmm. of the features that they yeah. added. Yeah. Uh, speaking of making predictions, today Apple is releasing earnings. That's today, I believe. Um, I predict they'll have a very good quarter. I predict they're going to be a thousand dollar company today. Uh, a trillion dollar company. <laughs> Remember last year I said last week I said billion. Now we're going down <laughs> a thousand, hundred million dollars. Trillion. Yeah. Uh, they, that's what they're aiming for. We'll see. You know, uh, typically, I mean, look, no one knows what the stock. The trillion comes from the stock valuation. Mm -hmm. The price of the stock times the number of outstanding shares is the value of the company. It has more to do with the value of the stock than it does with the actual value of the company. And as anybody who follows the stock market will tell you, there's a couple of things that happen. People buy on the rumor, the price goes up on the rumor, but when the actual numbers come out, good or bad, tends to go down. They sell on the news. That's one thing. And remember that when when you read the stock results, you're reading what happened last quarter, and the market is all about what's going to happen in the future. So whether Apple made money this quarter, whether it was a good quarter or a bad quarter, what people really will be looking at, as they did with Facebook, is, well, what does Apple say the prospects are for next quarter and next year and the years coming? And that's what they'll be paying attention to. So when CFO Luca Maestri comes on the phone and the analysts call uh, this afternoon, listen to what he says about future prospects. And I suspect they're going to say, as Facebook has said and others have said, we don't, you know, and they've said before, we, we think sales are going to taper off a little bit because you can only sell to everybody once <laughs> every well, few years. The rumor also is that the next iPhone will be cheaper than the iPhone 10. That'll be very interesting to see. Yeah. I don't, that there's no indication that the iPhone 10 didn't sell very well at that new price. And mm -hmm. I think for a lot of companies, not just Apple, uh, 
that was a be that was a bellwether. They said, oh, we can charge a thousand dollars for a phone. Mm -hmm. And I bet you Samsung, they're going to have an announcement in uh, in eight nine days, August 9th. I bet you they'll have a very expensive new Note nine, and I bet you will cross a thousand dollars because that's that's I think what Apple has proven. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, many people emailed me about your bag segment last week. What was in your bag? Like, what the heck is Leo thinking? <laughs> um, but the most common email I got was your lack of battery backup. Oh, uh, yeah, you know what? I don't carry that around day to day. Okay, but you do travel. Do you? What yeah. do you travel with? Anchor. Anchor, yes. That's what most people recommended, the Anchor battery backup. The reason, the reason yeah, absolutely. And when I'm getting on you the plane- You have a different bag. Well, yeah, I like to change it up. This is, well, and I should show this because this yeah. is another bag I like, which is, uh, this one is from uh, the Duluth Trading Company. That's nice. And That's real leather, huh? Fairly, in, yeah, but it's inexpensive, which is one oh. of the reasons I like it. So, yeah, and I didn't have a camera in there. Mm -hmm. we're, we're leaving town today. So this will have a more complete set of travel things. But he still has his Sharpie, so if you want an autograph, if you see him out there. Yeah, I am still carrying those pictures. <laughs> I will be forever. But I'm pretty sure, I bet you I have a battery in here. Because when I do leave town, absolutely I carry a battery. And and uh, <laughs> it's not always easy to find, but there it is. This is, actually, there are better batteries now. This one's fairly old, but the this is this is uh, an Aukey, A-U-K-E-Y, which is uh, another company that I like. I This this one is 10,000 milliamp hours. So that's really what I look for. I want, I think, you know, that's very closely correlated to size. There really is no breakthrough in lithium ion cells that says, oh, you can have 50,000 in something this size. It's always correlated to size. So you're going to decide, you know, well, how much do I need? 10,000 is enough to recharge an iPhone four or five times all the way up. Uh, I, I'm always looking for one that has fast charging. This one's a little uh, old because you see it has a micro USB charging port. And I really like to go with type C, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, but it and so it's USB Type A out, uh, type micro USB in. I do like this. It has a little uh, set of lights that tell me how charged it is. It's fully charged. Uh, so this is the one I uh, most often carry because it gives me the best balance of uh, power and weight. Because and so the reason I didn't have that in my bag, I'm not gonna carry that around day to day. That's mm -hmm. only when I go out of town that I need that one. Well, Brian we, Thornton, did you want to show something else in your no, bag? No, I'm just gonna say Anchor is the one I use. That's the one you. Use. Uh, Brian Thornton, he is a, a viewer, a fan of the show, and he also just started his YouTube channel called Blind Not Broken. We oh, answered a question about like his travels. Um, he was traveling all around, much to his wife's chagrin. Um, he sent us a video, and he sped it up a little bit so it would get under the two-minute mark, and it's kind of the stuff that he brings on his travels. Oh, let's see. Um, let's take a look at that. Hey, Leo and Megan, this is Brian. You might remember me from such questions as... Will the Apple Watch work with my tattoos? Or more recently, will the Skyroam work with my hike across Estonia? Just wanted to let you know that um, I wish I had actually gotten the Skyroam because after going through nine different countries at this point, I now have four different SIM cards and the Skyroam would have made that a lot easier. <laughs> I just wanted to comment real quick on the recent uh, video that you made on iOS Today about uh, travel gear and a few of the things I've been traveling uh, with over the last five weeks now uh, through Estonia and across, again, nine different countries. Uh, some things that, that I feel like might have been left out from your... Uh, from your uh, bag, uh, one of which I was a little shocked that you didn't mention. Um, one of those is the backup battery. Yeah, um, and that this looks thing like an anchor. has been a lifesaver for me. This is the anchor. I know you've talked about this before, and this is the one with the, uh, the USB-C charging. Uh, it will charge my iPhone 8 Plus, uh, I think, six times. Uh, it only charges the iPad twice for some reason, but it also charges my uh, Sony A7R 3 like three or four times. Um, this thing has uh, been a lifesaver, especially when I was hiking across Estonia um, and was going sometimes three and four days without seeing civilization. Um, the other I see thing the I size of that, though. You mentioned yeah. gaffer's tape. Something that I found uh, really useful is K-tape. Um, I don't really believe in the whole uh, stretching the muscles with the K-tape, but one thing I can say, if you get foot blisters, this is uh, the best stuff in the world nice. uh, because it kind of molds around your feet. Uh, the other thing that you mentioned with the gaffer's tape uh, is that it, it doesn't leave a residue. This doesn't either. Um, and it works really well uh, to, to uh, repair things. I actually used some of this on my tent. But for stronger repairs, I did end up using duct tape. And one thing I wanted to share with you is uh, not necessarily equipment, but a way to carry it because this can be quite bulky. But if you have a tripod or hiking, uh, ah, hiking clever. Clothes, uh you can actually wrap the duct tape or gaffer's tape or K-tape around one what a great of, idea. Uh, of your tripod or hiking pole. Yeah. And it takes up less room. A lot of shooters do that. I've seen that. Um, finally, something yes. that's a little strange, 
but a canteen. Um, I bought this for the camping trip, only used it a couple of times because the fire danger in Estonia was really high and we couldn't have fires, uh, but it was great for coffee. Uh, but the other thing I found is instead of, uh, instead of getting rid of it once I finished the hiking, I actually ended up using it. Uh, and this is a really good way to transport uh, laundry pods. And sorry, my shampoo and soap are already in the bathroom, but in more urban settings, you can carry your soap and shampoo without worries of getting uh, smushed. These are just a few things that I've found. Uh, I really appreciate everything that you've shown us so far. Thanks again for all your help. I've uh, been with you guys for several, several years now since the old Tech TV days. So thank thanks, you again. Brian. Take care. And like I tell everybody on my YouTube channel, please remember, I may be blind, but I'm not broken. <laughs> <laughs> I would just suggest a little less Red Bull next time before you do the, <laughs> yeah, the video. But other than that, uh, no, so that so that's uh, all very good stuff. He's yeah. more of a hiker, yeah. uh, a backpacker than, uh, than I am. See, I, I'm an urban mm -hmm. traveler, so I don't. I don't Get bring blisters. Tide Pods with me. <laughs> you know, unless I got really hungry. Yeah. Uh, we got an email from Rick from North Carolina. He says, this is a pretty funny one. Uh, he says, watching the latest iOS Today show, both you and Leo were surprised that the Apple Watch does not have a calendar, not have out calendar months. So more months. Actually, I emailed you this question and you recommended Koyomi. As a result, I've been using it routinely and the dev has uh, kept it current Oh, with all the updates, it works great as I still use it routinely. It does moving 12 months up to July 2019. And then I recalled, we did answer Rick's question. So we gave Rick probably a year or more ago the recommendation of this free Apple Watch app to get months ahead. And he remembered and we did not. So that's the uh, sad part about doing the show <laughs> for so darn long. We forget the answers. Yeah. But that's the good part. That, you uh, didn't. You didn't. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Bob writes, please pass along my thanks to Leo for highlighting liquid text this week. I'd moved oh, yeah. it to the no longer using folder, the free version months ago, and only vaguely remembered what it did. The free version builds itself as a PDF reader, and I'd moved on to other apps for that. But after Leo's walkthrough of the paid version, I realized it's exactly what I need to complement Scrivener yeah. in my work as a full-time freelance writer. Exactly. It's kind of a Scrivener uh, analog. Yeah. He says, yeah. I've been working iPad only for the last 18 months, writing books and about four articles a month for print. And it's apps like this that help to make that easier and frankly, more fun. Nice. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm very glad you thought so, Bob. And I actually really credit to Andy Anako who uh, recommended it on Mac Break Weekly. So it is a really neat app. It's a little pricey, 20 bucks. So that's why it's worth looking at the uh, advanced features a little bit. But that is a good Make reminder because sure I download apps all the time and then I forget. Yeah, so. don't you? Don't, yeah, I do the same <laughs> thing. Yeah. Uh, okay, here's a question Harold has. I was wondering if I should get the 2017 iPad Pro or just wait for the 2018 iPad Pro. I will using, be using it mostly for college work. And yes, I'm 37 and in college and am in college. Nice. LOL. Good for you, Harold. What do you think? I'm going to college too. Going to get that degree someday. Mm -hmm. I'm doing it online. Uh, well, that's up to you. You have to decide. I think that the three twenty, you know, the iPad that they announced last year is very affordable. Starts at three hundred thirty bucks. Even less, you're a student, right? Maybe he can get the student deal, three hundred dollars. Mm. Uh, and we don't. And of, of course, there. Even though we talk about it as if it's going to happen, there is no guarantee there'll be an iPad in the fall. It's likely, but there's no guarantee, and we don't know anything really about it. So uh, the thing is, if you're buying an iPad Pro. Uh, as I have here, and I really, for college work, I'd recommend it because you can use the pencil with it. Um, it's more powerful. It has the true tone screen. It has some additional advantages. Uh, also, unlike the low-cost iPad, the uh, screen, the glass is laminated, uh, uh, glued more tightly on the background. Some people notice that, that it feels like your finger's floating on the less expensive iPad. And the iPad Pro, it really feels like it's directly touching the surface there's a in other words there are differences and if you thought well i do want the ipad pro i want the pencil i want the additional features i want the smart connector on the bottom that allows me to use keyboards and if you're using it for college work i think all of those things are frankly important then i would wait because this one is a little older than the one they last uh, last announced last year and i do think this is what they're going to update i think the next ipads will be ipad pros so if you can wait a, you know, a month or two, it's hard to say how long it'll be. It might be September, it might be October. Then I think it's going to be worth waiting for, yeah. Is it time to wear hats? Mm, I hope so, because I decided to bring my camping hat with me. Oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> me like too. To, I like to wear this to scare bears away. Um, yeah. I am wearing my king hat. 
Yes, I'm wearing my king hat. <laughs> Actually, it's my mad hat. Because it's app cap time. Yay! Our favorite apps of the week. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been having fun with this app. It's called Animatics. And it is an app that will animate your photos. Mm. Which, I mean, we've seen these before, lots of them. But um, I thought this one was very cool. So I'll take this picture of you. Um, and uh, I can choose first, do I want noise? Or wave. Oh, so you don't need more than one. More you than can one animate. photo? It's like no. plot plotogram. Yeah, plotogram. yeah sort yeah. of. So like I can um, swipe to adjust. I can adjust the frequency of the photos. Of the, oh, look. Of the, see, That's you're just creepy. kind of waving around. That's really creepy. Yeah. So it's like, it, it's like one of those uh, Harry Potter portraits where kind it's of. a little movement in there. Yeah. I can, you can be shifty as, as you are sometimes. Sharp. Oh yeah, see that's now it looks like it's a little distorted, huh? I you can look. I like this one. It's like just breathing, isn't it just just that makes you moving. just doubt your senses. Yes, like oh my god, <laughs> I must be hallucinating. Um and yeah, I I posted one of these on Instagram, um, a picture of some donuts. Let's see if I can find. Am I um, wearing red ears. What is that on my head? <laughs> That's the clock or something oh, behind something you. Behind when back me. when we used to sit, over it looks the, like I, I got know. little. Uh, cat ears on little ones though it does look like that little, tiny ones <laughs> um let me see if i can show you the donuts i thought it worked quite well with the donuts here maybe inanimate objects it's better yeah so you post, post this on your instagram feed mm -hmm. what is can your you instagram see? feed by the way at megan maroney okay um you can't really even see that no i can well. kind of see it see it's it. like slight motion it's um, not dramatic motion like plotograph yeah. So maybe it's um, better if I, oh, I'll take a, a selfie that's already a little disturbing <laughs> and <laughs> use that one. See, like, because, you know, if I turn that off, I don't, oh, I'm, no. you don't have to have them. You can just have it animated. I feel like, yeah. Or subtle. I think I took the brown acid. Uh -huh. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, if you just want to freak people uh. out. Edge. Whoa. Sp oh, Sparkle. And then you can also um, do like more comics. Ah. You can really distort this. So play with it to get the effect you yeah, want. The yeah, the three tone. Oh. Yeah. Um, this is basically one of those things, like if you have no artistic <sighs> right. ability or at all. Or you'd like to know what the DTs are like. Yeah, <laughs> right. Uh -huh. Don't do drugs, kids. No. Use an animatics is, uh, instead. There's ants crawling all over <laughs> my body. <laughs> It's exactly the same, but you can um, be productive tomorrow. Look at that one. That's my favorite. <laughs> if I wanted to give you nightmares, oh, that's what I would send yeah, you. Yeah, because at first it looks like a still, and then it's yeah. slightly moving. It's like, ay, 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 ay. Yeah. What, did I, what did I have last night? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's why is it on the... Let's take another photo of you. Take more? You, you well, because wanna... you're wearing the Mad Hatter hat, so that is more appropriate. Yes. <gasps> well, that's a good photo. <laughs> Use that one. Of something. Um, let's. <laughs> oh, it really does add a little uh, something to it. I don't. It's a little creepy, mm -hmm. and it turns into an animated GIF, so you can post it on yes. Instagram. Yes. So okay. let's so, do cartoon. It's nice because it's compatible with everything. I like smooth better, and then um, breathing. Oh so yeah. It's just subtle. And then this just really will make um, somebody feel really uh, wheezy if they <sighs> see that because they won't see, know what's wrong. I, I'm gonna share that as a GIF. Oh, you could do a Apple style live photo as well. And then what should I how say? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Leo. We're all mad here. Yeah. <laughs> I think Leo's had too much mercury in his hat. <laughs> and then I've tweeted it. Ah, out and, um, nice. Animatics free. Go check the twit. Er. Mm -hmm. the, yeah, that's also Megan, yeah. Megan Maroney. It adds panache. I, I really <laughs> like Look at your Apple watch. That, yeah, there it is. Yeah, it's kind of. Did it odd. do the picture or the GIF? It's static. Like it's still static. Yeah, mm. that might. Uh, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. Mine is a game that uh, I saw Scott Bio uh, of Waxy Links uh, tweet about, recommend, and a number of other people. And so I think all the cool kids are playing Hold Down. <laughs> it is uh, four dollars. It's not free, but that's I like it. I don't want I don't want freemium. I want a game where you buy it and you own it. Okay, um, let's go back to the map. The theory is we're asteroid mining, but it isn't really that. It's more like a breakout. We're gonna dig, and I oh, love the I love the sound. 
So it's kind of a mix of breakout meets Tetris because these are going to slide up. Your goal is to dig down and get them off the board before they hit you. You get a couple of balls, but as time goes by... Uh, by the way, I just got an achievement, clear screen. As time goes by, uh, you'll get more balls, you'll get different features, and you can even buy without real money, but 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 with credits earned in the play of the game. See, I made a hole in there. Now, let's see if I can get in there. This is going to test your billiard skill. Are you good at angles of incidence? No, I wasn't. I was trying to get down. Um, <sighs> see, it's getting closer. Inch by inch. So you really want to make sure you get those bricks that are going to cause problems later. And ideally, you get down inside of that thing. So let's see if we can do that. Let's just fire down. Um, <laughs> that's not... get in there? That's not what you're hoping for. So it's a little like online pool, too. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's a little bit... Oh, man. You got to know your... You got to know your, uh, your angles of incidence. Oh, man. This is bad news. Okay, I can get some stuff here, though. See, I got an extra ball. Oh, that's good. good. That's going to help. Oh, but see. Oh, I'm hoping. Oh, I got him. Notice, by the way, I didn't hit that. So there's not a couple of things. There's numbers. That means to clear that, you have to hit six times. But if the bricks underneath are removed, the bricks will fall. So that's good, too. I haven't played this long enough to know if they're falling to somewhere that they will then reappear. So you could be just making more trouble for yourself in the long run. I don't know. Oh, oh, terrible at this game. It's a lot of fun. And then once... Once you uh, let's uh, let's just pretend that I know what I know what I'm doing here. Uh, once you, uh... oh. So the numbers are how many times you have to hit it with the ball to clear it. Okay. Yeah. But as I said, you can get rid of something by getting the bricks underneath. So if I can get that last one, see that eight fell, even though I only I didn't hit it. Mm. So that's useful. It's 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 fun. Yeah. It's fun. Easy. It's easy. Uh, it's a little stressful. If I go back, so I've got four crystals. Let's go back to the uh, let's go back to the uh, map. Those are the options. I don't want to resume. I, well, maybe I have to. Maybe I can't go to the map uh, while I'm while I'm playing. There's the leaderboards. Here's the here's the achievements. I've got one there. That was on purpose. Miss all blocks while the warning line is visible. <laughs> That's a good achievement. Uh, you can buy with the crystals, uh, but I, you know what I have to do? I have to lose for a, for me to show you where you can do that. And that's, I'm, I'm just too good at it. It's very hard for me to lose. Mm -hmm. Oh, good. I lost. <laughs> you do have just a limited number of shots. So let's return to the surface, and then I can show you that I can buy some upgrades. How many starting balls I can have. How big my ball buffer is, my uh, hold size before I need to surface. How many shots? You notice I ran out of shots, so that might be one that I'd, I'd like to increase. Uh, and then a mining license lets you go to other planets. Now, I haven't gotten that far, but it's going to get more interesting, I presume, as I go to other planets. So this, I suspect this game, without any in-app purchases, hallelujah, will have a lot of playability over a long period of time. It's called Hold Down, H-O-L-E-D-O-W-N which is, I guess, a play on many, many, many words. Available on Android, too, if you're watching this show for reasons I don't understand. Don't use an iPad or an iPhone. I was playing the iPad version. There's a great iPhone version, very similar. A lot of fun. I, this is a big category all of a sudden, is these multi-ball mm -hmm. breakout games. There's tons of them. Uh, but this one seems to have a lot of depth, and I love it that it's $3.99 and you own it. It's See, I never can get it to do anything that interesting. Not yet. Not yet. But you're going on a little maybe vacation. I'll get, maybe mm -hmm. I'll get better. Yeah. Martin jo Jonasson and Hold Down. All the cool kids are playing at my app cap for today. All right. Well, I've emptied my brain of all the iOS information in it. I put it in this giant hat, <laughs> which is available yes, for purchase all that information on our website. There. If you want to watch the show live, we do it around 9 a.m. Pacific. It varies depending on schedules and so forth. Around 9 a.m. Pacific on Tuesdays. That's noon Eastern, 1600 UTC. Uh, you can also watch. That's at the live stream, twit.tv slash live. You can also join us in studio if you email tickets at twit.tv. And if you do either, you probably should join the chat room where the real cool kids are irc.twit.tv you can always download 
on demand uh, after the fact at twit.tv slash iOS or use your favorite Apple uh, application for podcasts and uh, subscribe. That way you'll get it every week automatically. How can people uh, send us their sped up videos? <laughs> Megan at twit.tv. Yes, keep it under two minutes. And yeah, I mean, you you can speed it up. That All useful information. Yeah. Uh, thank you. We for, love that. And yeah, questions too. It's great. Yeah. yeah, we love questions. We love comments. Megan at twit.tv or find me on Twitter. And a last uh, tip before we go. iOS 12 public beta 4 came out today, as Good you can see. I'm about to download it. I wisely decided not to do it before the show. Mm -hmm. But uh, if, you're on the, if you're on the public beta... We're slowly catching up to those developers. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's a good sign. I think that they'll probably freeze this in the next few weeks, which would indicate a September event for the iPhone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm going to install it right now. Me too. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time on iOS Today. Bye-bye.